All right. Let's do this. Let's do this. Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is one big canvas, you guys. One ginormous canvas the size of a sucker. Huge, huge canvas. So, <clears throat> let's all get ready to rock and roll. I'm gonna tell you the colors we're going with. What the heck, that sounded like an explosion outside. <clears throat> People must still have some fireworks going. So we've got all these different colors, but we're probably only gonna stick to these ones on this side over here, which is our Prussian blue, that very dark blue, our thalo blue, the lighter blue, alizarin crimson, midnight black, and titanium white on our giant 30 inch by 40 inch canvas. Thing is humongous humongously big. So this is a commission painting. It's not for sale. It's already sold. Going to Patricia and she hit me up and said I want a really big painting for behind my couch with blues and pinks and waterfalls and a full moon and all sorts of stuff. So I said you got it. You got it. Let's rock and roll. So we're going to come in here. What you doing up here coconut? What you doing sweetheart? Come here. Come here. Say hi to everybody. Come here. Oh the baby. Oh she's my baby. Oh she's my baby. Look at the camera. Did you come say hello? Did you come say hello to everybody? Oh, you're so sweet. Okay, get out of here. Go on, go downstairs, go on. Get out. Bailey! Bailey! Go downstairs. Call Coconut, please. My goodness. Oh, cute little visitor. So her cute little visitor came in. Had to give her a squeeze. Now I'm probably covered in, cat, uh, in dog hair. So, let's get our big old gigantic cake pan. We need, this is an eight inch by two inch cake pan. The, the client wanted a big full moon, so. And I have a big old cake pan, but we're not going to do the entire moon. Just going to do probably about half of it. You can see I've taken color and put it all over our canvas, from our crimson to our deep blue colors, and all these things all over everywhere. So wherever we touch it with white paint, it's going to shine through. Now let's decide. Maybe we'll get our bit of our moon up here. So we'll have a blue moon, maybe a little bit of a pinkish bottom. We're only going to go around a little bit. I'm going to make it nice and even, so don't push harder on one side and not that hard on the other side, right? Again, don't even need to do the whole moon because we're going to put some clouds around the bottom. It's going to be awesome. Now, taking the same bit of paint, we come in here, just start whipping them around in circles like that. Grabbing onto our line, whipping it down, whipping it down, whipping it down. The more, the more that you push against the canvas, the more of our white paint is going to drop off of our brush, right? Now we're getting to the point where we have no more white paint. So let's go back and get some more. Got to wash it off in the old paint thinner cup. We're actually going to have to get need to get more paint thinner out of the cup. We don't have enough. Not enough in there. So, now, all we gotta do is start filling it in. So we're gonna take a little bit of our white, just like this, right onto the brush. Anywhere that we touch that's got color underneath it, that, that white's gonna start to shine through. So, little downward strokes, coming out to our line, grabbing it, coming down. Little sideways deals, like that. Makes it, more, makes it look more round. To me, anyway. That's like so, right? Then we're going to go through and we're going to add some clouds. We're going to do all sorts of different things so you don't have to worry about it. Come on to this guy along the back, just a little bit less color because it's already less bright on our brush, right? We didn't add any color to it. We're just dumping off whatever's there and going to have it blend in so we'll have a bright side of the moon and a dark side of the moon. It's going to be fantastic. Now, wash that old brush off again and we'll probably set it down for a little while because we don't need it. At least for a little while. So you guys can tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? You know the Paint with Josh show, and if you don't, I'm always hungry for whatever reason. So it's because I'm so skinny, right? <laughs> but the uh, tell me what you're, where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? I love to know what you guys are eating. What did you have for dinner tonight? What do you plan on eating? What's your favorite midnight snack? Whatever it is, tell me in the comments. I gotta know. Make sure if you're watching over on on uh, YouTube that you give me a thumbs up. However many people are watching, we should have that many thumbs up watching. And if you're watching over on TikTok, make sure you're tap, tap, tapping that screen. Got to tappy taps on the screen. It really helps more than you know. More than you know. Just taking these colors down like that, mixing them around. The more we push, right, the more it's going to push that color. The more we pull from this side, the more it's going to drag that color and become nice and soft. Even taking our finger all the way out on the end just to get that last little bit of brightness without coming out of our little lines. Just a little piece of action right out there. Gorgeous. 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 Bam, bam, bam. Right? Don't want to pull too much of our blue into our pink, but we don't want it to be too bright either. I'm going to leave it just like that. Fantastic. Let's go wash all the color off of that brush. We'll probably set it down because we'll need it later on. 
and we're going to use them a lot today. So we've got a big old plate, a big old canvas to cover, a lot of area to cover, which means we're going to be using a lot of brushes and a lot of paint. All right, so go through the colors again one more time, just your just case that you're just tuning in right now. We've got our Thalo, uh, Prussian Blue, Thalo Blue, Alizarin Crimson, Midnight Black, Titanium White. You can see we've used the two blues and the crimson to cover the entire canvas. And now as we go over it with our white paint, wherever we put white down, it's going to shine through all those gorgeous colors, you guys. It's fantastic. Now we're going to come in with just a ginormous section of clouds, right? What if we had up in here, I'll show you all this blue color that's down underneath. So all we do is add white to our, to our brush. And wherever we come up and touch and smush that bit on, it's going to go blue, right? Now, depending on how much blue you have underneath here, if you've really caked on the blue, then your white is going to go blue very fast, right? I just had a question about that on TikTok. I was answering somebody's uh, message, and they messaged me and said, whenever I try to do my colors, they just, my white just blends down instantly, right? Do I need to use liquid white in my clouds? No, do not use liquid white in the clouds. It will make them grow too far. That's not what you want. We're just using plain old titanium white, just a really thick white paint. And as we adjust with our eyes, right, we start to spin it. And the more that we spin, the more we start to see it change and become darker and darker and darker. And then all we got to do is just stop. Just stop. Whenever you're ready, whenever you feel like it's blended enough, just quit. Quit right there. Quit while you're ahead, right? Now we're going to come back. We're going to wash both those brushes off because we want to have some clean white brush. Get some nice white paint out there and have it interact with all these gorgeous colors. Fantastic, right? Now, again, going to come in here. Loading up that white. Look at the pile of white compared to the pile of all the other colors that we have on the, on the palette here. Now, let's say we wanted to connect into here again. Now we're in this patch of crimson where it's going to be very bright pink. Look at this. Oh, she said she wanted some pinky bits to her clouds, and she's got a like a navy blue sort of motif for the house and wanted some pink in the clouds and all sorts of stuff. So I said, all right, you got it. You got it, ma'am. I am glad. I would be glad to do that. Now, we're going to start in our pink area because I don't want to start in the blue and have it drag over and dilute the pink and darken it, right? So let's grab it in here. Watch. We're going to work it down this way. Depending on how hard we pull or how much paint is up there, depends on how hard or how far the clouds are going to grow, right? Now into here, we worked it from our very bright area down into a dark area down in here, right? Then we pop it in with our next bit of brightness. It doesn't have to be white. It could be pink, but bright pink. And then it'll go down and down and down, get darker and darker and darker, and then you come in with another bit of cloud or some trees or whatever you're going to put down there, right? Very cool. Just like that, we mix it up until we like how it looks. Now I'm going to come across into the moon. Boom, 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 boom. Mixing it, pushing it, blending it. You can always go back. You can add more paint. You can do whatever you want to do. All right, so we came back in with a bit more white. Throw it back into here. So you got more chunky white up onto the canvas, right? And then what we're going to do is use less pressure as we blend it away. We don't want to blend it to have it look exactly like it just did. That's why we're adding more white. We need some more bright areas, right? So we're going to come in here with less pressure and keeping it brighter white because we're not blending it away. The clouds are a little chunkier. They're a little heavier in that spot because we're not pushing and blending them so soft. And that's how you keep them a little bit brighter. Do whatever you want down here. Just let them fall down. Bring that white color as hard as you can push it, as far as you want to bring it down. You can do whatever you want to do, guys. That's the best part about painting or paint with Josh is I'm going to show you how to make it look kind of neat. You're going to take it and run with it and do all sorts of crazy stuff that I never even thought of. All right? And that's the coolest bit. It's the coolest part about painting. You don't have to copy it exactly. All I'm here to do is just show you how you can get some cool little techniques to work in your painting. And then you take it and adapt it to that, right? Don't get me wrong. I love when people try to copy it and they send in the exact copy, like when we do the tutorials and stuff. I love that. But it's not a requirement. You don't have to do that. You know what I mean? It doesn't have to be perfectly like the video. It doesn't have to match these colors perfectly. You can see something and go off in your own direction. It's perfectly fine. I love it when that happens. Now, let's come in. We're going to wash off that fan brush again, get a bit more white onto the brush. You guys are going to tell me where you're watching from, what's your favorite sandwich. And if you want to get your own custom Paint With Josh painting, go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com and then purchase the custom link. And it comes with them on a much smaller canvas. Or send me a message and discuss it. I want a really big canvas. I'll quote your price, and then I'll send you a link, and you can buy it, right? Just like that. Nice and easy. Now, we're going to load up the paintbrush again. 
A little bit of chunky white on the brush. That's all we need to do. You guys are going to tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? And we're going to have a great time. Look at that pink in there, guys. Oof. Just gorgeous, right? Even up here, it's a little bit too thick. Mix it down just a touch. Maybe drag it in towards the moon. Oh, look at that. Oh, fantastic. Maybe put like a little touch of white in there. Just, just a little touch. Just a little bit and then very lightly over it so it doesn't blend away to the same amount of, you know, that different color. Awesome, awesome. Okay, come in here. All that white, smush it out into there. Leaving dark areas and then popping up into our color. Right? Just like your little waves on the ocean. But you don't want to have the light touch the light. You got to have a bit of darkness in there. But then again, you don't want to have the same amount of darkness throughout the whole thing. So every once in a while, you come up into your shadowy bit and you touch it with some more paint. It'll look really cool. Now, the more paint that you have on the brush, the brighter it's going to be as you come up. Right? You're going to decide. You don't want to bring it up into there because then the two bright areas are going to be too close together. But you get to decide what it looks like. All the paint that's up there, just whip it, man. Just whip it good. Let's get some Devo in this piece and just whip it. Whip it good, right? We're going to come in here very lightly because there's more paint right here. If I mix it to the same amount, then these clouds are going to look the same and there's not going to be any depth or distance in there, right? So very light, keeping those dark areas in between. Don't ruin it. Don't go up and get too close now. These brushes like to... You know, with your pressure, they like to flick out a little bit, and sometimes it'll come up and get out a little bit too far to where you want it to be. So start adjusting, start looking at it. You don't have to do it all in one go like me. You can take a step back, pause, go back, look at it, go, okay. All right, it might look neat if I do a little bit more of this or a little bit more of that. Or if I switch colors or switch brushes back to a clean brush so we can get all that crimson -y pink down there without turning blue. And then out here, turn a little bit more blue, drop a little bit more of that color. All depends. Right? We're going to decide when it's finished, what we get to do. It's going to be really cool. Really, really cool. And you can tell, wherever we put all these colors underneath are going to be able to have fun and act as this backdrop for our, our trees and stuff that are going to sit in the front. So you don't need them to be super thick. You want them to be sort of spread out and fluff them up a little bit. Ooh, nice and soft. Gorgeous. Right? You just get these sweet little puffy clouds way out in the distance. It's awesome. Look at those clouds, guys. Just amazing. Just amazing. And come up here and soften our little moon down. I almost forgot to do that. Soften that guy down. Just with our bigger brush, right? All you got to do, just takes the little brush strokes out of it, makes them a little softer out in the distance. Now, we're going to clean off our brushes again. Because you gotta have some clean tools when you're gonna paint with Josh. You gotta, if we're gonna, if we have all these colors up there and we only have just a few, you can't contaminate them all, right? So, I wonder if Patricia is here, if she's in the comments. Let's see, this painting was already sold. Uh, and I, you know, it's not up to me to tell you what it was, but it was a grand. We sold it for a grand and uh, as a custom commission piece. And this one's gonna go somewhere across the country. They don't live very close to me, so. Shipping was included uh, as part of the, uh, the decision-making process on how much I was going to charge, how big the canvas was, and just exactly how far it was going to have to go. All goes in, the time and detail and editing and all the stuff that goes into a custom Paint with Josh painting like this. Then we start to, bigger you go, the more it gets, right? That's what you got to do. Bang, just like that, get that little bit off of there. Awesome, turned out fantastic. All right, we're gonna put our little bit of trees in there. It's gonna be cool. Oh, please, for this camera, yeah. And with free shipping, get out of town. The, uh, I normally, it would have been a bit more, but this lady had just also bought a second, like she bought a painting and then came back and was like, hey, I wanna, I, just, I know I just got this one, but I also want a bigger one. And I was like, okay, I got you. I got you, we'll get you, we'll get it done. All right, now, let's come back in. We're gonna get a little bit of our darker colors. Just like this, I'm going to mix up our black and crimson and blues, my favorite colors to make a shadowy base out of. Right? you got to have this deep shadowy base, otherwise our highlights don't have anything to stand out against. If you just put highlight up, on a, up against a black background with nothing there, it's really difficult to make it look right. you got to have that extra dark shadow in there, right? So we'll get our bit of our fan brush. Just a little guy, it doesn't need to be too big. We're gonna come up and cover some of those clouds. So no matter how much you love your clouds, how perfect of a job they came out to be, you've gotta go cover over some parts of the 
just a few bits. I don't come up like that. Boom. Pop it into the clouds, start popping in a couple little bits of tree branches just by mushing on the corner. Right? You have those clouds back there, there's a little bit of backdrop color. And then the more and more that we come down, the more you start to mush it from the middle outwards. Pop, 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 pop. Right? You start creating this little tree shape, which we're going to then go back and highlight. It's going to look really cool. Now, bring it in for a little bit more. You got to have enough paint on the brush. If you're going to want to do this, you got to have enough paint. Maybe we come under here. Shh, harder, 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 harder. Boom! Right? Start very thin. Up at the top, and then the more you come down, the more you push, the more you push, extending your trunk out, get a little bit thicker. It's going to be really cool, guys. I can already tell this one's going to be awesome. Now we're going to come over here. Let's do that same little thing. We'll pop in a little guy and go all the way down, very thin, until we get down to the bottom and push a little bit more. Little tree trunks out there in the night sky. It's going to be fantastic. A little bit over there, right? And we're going to come in again with the tip of the brush. Gotta have a straight enough little, there we go. Gotta have our treetop stand out. If it's not dark enough, going over that light color of our, of our um, clouds, then you gotta go back and make it darker. Right, popping it in, little bits, as so we start coming down. Then you start popping out, right? All we're doing is doing this, just where you guys can't see. I'm trying to get it done, but I'm also trying to make this painting a good painting since the lady paid a fair amount of money for it, right? It is an already sold painting. This isn't just a practice little piece that we're showing you guys techniques on. So I realize you won't be able to see every single thing that I'm doing, but we got to remember that it also sold for a thousand bucks and I can't show you every single teeny tiny thing up close and personal when we're doing a live show, right? So, I will always go back, I always go back and download these streams and then try to get as close zoomed in as possible when we come to do the details and stuff for all my little short videos and different things. And uh, people tend to like them, they seem to like them anyway. Alright, <clears throat> now we've at least got a little bit of where our mid-ground is sat in, right? Our mid-guard where Thor and Odin live, way back there, we're going to get a little bit of that white paint onto the brush. Now, I've already prepped the canvas, remember, with all those colors underneath, so I knew then I wanted a waterfall falling right here, and I knew I wanted it to be pink. That's why we put the crimson stripe right there. Then we're going to have it come down this way, and then it's going to hit a point where it's got to turn and then fall over the side, maybe in three different places. You can have all sorts of waterfall action on this painting. It's going to be awesome. Now, we take that little bit like this. Right? Go like that. We need to decide. Let's come from the left, go over to the left, and then, uh, sorry, from the right, over to the left, and then down. Very small. Not a lot of paint on the, on the brush, right? But very light pressure initially, we're going to start it out. Let's go like that. We're going to work it from back there. Fall straight down. Oh, gorgeous, you guys. Look at all the red color that got onto the brush. Just from that one bit, right? So we're going to turn it back to that white side. Do it again. Go over to the top. Straight down. Oh, my heck. If that's not the coolest thing ever, right? And let's say you go about an inch below that guy, and we start dropping in. More paint. You can see I've added blue and I've added pink down here, so we'll have little differences in color in our water. Now all we have to do is don't add too much white, otherwise it'll all start going the same amount. Right? But you can see, even as we go over different places, it starts showing up differently. And leave some dark areas in there. You gotta have some bits of dark too. Right? Gotta have bits of dark. Don't have to be that dark, but you gotta have bits of dark in there. Now, come over here. Swiping it, swiping it, swiping it, however you want to do it, right? Water came down, hit, started to pool up. Back in here, maybe we had a few little bits of misty fog, which is why you leave about that inch underneath. So you can come in with some white on our brush, dab up into the thing. See, again, we're leaving that space so it can grow down, right? That's our dark separator. If you've ever seen me paint a seascape, you know about the dark separator and how important they are, right? Now. All we're going to do is start to mix it up just like we made our clouds. We're going to start to mix it and mix it and mix it down and mix it down, but not get rid of that dark separator, right? Got to have it. So don't let this color touch that color. Come in here, so small, ooh, just like that. Just bringing it down lightly, 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 lightly until you just have that little baby dark separator down there. Just a little baby. It's like my little coconut who came up here and said hello earlier. Did you guys miss my little doggie? Came up and said hello. I picked her up and held her. She's so sweet. Look at all that mist. Oh, it's a like, Floats up wicked. Right now, all we got to do, add a little bit more white to our brush. 
to make it brighten itself up, right? Wherever we add that bit of white, it's going to interact with the colors around it, right? Again, keeping our dark separator, so no matter how far out you go with your mist, don't get rid of the dark separator. Make sure you keep that little bit of darkness in between your bits of color. That's all you're going to need. That's a little shadowy. It's the very deepest, darkest, shadowy bit underneath where that that mist is, that little cloudy mist, way underneath there is that dark shadow. That's where you got to keep it. Now we're going to mix this guy up just a little bit more. And all of a sudden, we got a really cool looking waterfall. And you're like, but Josh, the water's just coming from nowhere. What do you mean? All right, we're going to take this guy we're going to slide him off to the side. Very lightly. Just like that, right? So you can tell the water is coming from somewhere. We're going to get to the edge. Very lightly. Go over the side. Just a little bit. Get that fire falls in there. Looks really cool. Now... This is where we got to start making some decisions and stuff about our rocks, right? So you have to put your mist down there so when you go across it with your dark rocky color, it's going to stand out. That's what I'm talking about. We're going to come in here. I'm going to start to dump on little bits so we can see where the water is coming from just over the edge of the rocks. It's leading out. We're going to get smaller and smaller and just revealing the corner right there. So you get all these little things. You can see where the water is coming from. It's coming out of there. We get this little bit of rocky bit that comes out and just jabs into our little bit of waterfall just right on the edge. That's all you gotta have, just so it's not perfect, right? All you gotta have so it's not perfect. And then we're gonna come down, we'll start dragging these little guys down. Watch as we hang these little drips over the side. They start looking like they're out in front of the mist, right? Like little stalactites hanging down. All you gotta do is have that color in there first, right? Depends where you have them. Drop a little bit of that color back in there. All of a sudden you got this wicked little rock. It's waiting for just waiting for some highlight colors, screaming out. It's going, Josh, please, I want to be lit up. Please show everybody me. I want to, they want to see me. Just show them. I know, we're coming, we're coming, we're coming in. Now, back underneath this little tree, sliding that darkness back just so we have a bit of rocky stuff that we can play around with, right? And then we'll come in and make this gorgeous little color, dragging all this stuff down, get all these little bits that fall down and hang over that bit of mist. It's going to be really cool, guys. Really, really neat. So remember to tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? Make sure you're tapping that screen or at least you give me a thumbs up if you're watching over on YouTube. And just how much I love you guys. Just remember that, okay? Now let's come back in here, get a little of our brown, a little of our crimson, or sorry, our uh, yellow ochre. Not the crimson. Well, we could probably get some crimson too. But a bit of brown, a bit of our yellow ochre down there like that. Right? The yellow ochre's got some skin on the top. There we go. Get rid of this guy. Ha ha! I got you! Got rid of you. There you go. A little bit of yellow ochre on there with the brown. Mix it in. Not overdoing it, right? You don't want to mix it so badly that you lose all those little things. And we're going to come scrape it up like that. Come in here and decide. Maybe we got these few little bits and we don't want to touch all the color together, right? Don't want to have all the brown touch all the brown. Leave those little darks, little bits that aren't getting touched in there. They're so sweet. So sweet, right? Take that guy and you slide it off to the side. And all of a sudden we get this little rock that starts to build itself out of nothing. Maybe he comes down this way. Right? They're not all going to go the same way, so stop and then change direction. Stop! Have a tie! Mm, 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 mm. Right? No? Nobody? Nobody gets me. It's fine. Don't worry about it. It's fine. We're gonna come over here, take this little bit, just along the edge, trying to leave a little bit of darkness in between the brown and the pink water. Right? Come back in like that, a little bit, shaking it down, sliding it off. Get all these cool little bits. Remember, it's a nighttime scene. It's very dark out. It doesn't have to be the most brightest thing you ever done did see. Now we're going to come back in here, go down a different way. All right? Change the direction of our little swipey swipers. All right? And all of a sudden you got these cool little rocks that you can start to do stuff with all the way out there. Depends on what you guys want it to look like. Right? A little bit hanging over the edge. Little different things and they start to build. Oh, it's wicked, you guys. Okay. Now we're running out of our shadowy colors, so we need to make up some more. Some black, crimson, both those blue colors. Mix them into this very deep, dark, purpley, shadowy bit that will look like a bunch of big, big black pile of paint, right? Just a bunch of big nastiness that you wouldn't want to drop on your carpet or your tile floor. Let me tell you that. So we're going to come over here. Let's decide. Maybe we came up a little bit higher with these rocks. Just dumping them on. All right, little bits. All we need is that bit of our darkness in there in order to have it stand out, and it's going to grip on to our little bits of our highlight paint. Now, say we came over this way, so we're coming down from a different angle, pulling it down towards our water line. And then say we come over the water just a bit, pop it out that way. Maybe we trap that, oh, we get that whole water thing stuck behind that. Oh, it's going to be awesome. 
going to be awesome. All right, now we're going to take our water very lightly, start swiping it side to side, not trying to get rid of any details. Right? You want to have those little swipers, just like that. Oh, gorgeous. Just fire. Just fire me up. All right, I'm going to take this guy over here, dropping him off, pulling all that deep darkness off to the side so we can come back and highlight it with a bit of our rocky color as we're wrapping our way around, right? All depends on what we do with it. Now, let's go back since we have a bit more of this tree color over here. And let's make a few more little bits, little guys, little... All the way down, right? The more and more and more you go down, the more pressure you're putting onto the brush, which spreads it out. Makes the little trunk a little thicker over there. Very cool. Now we're going to come in, maybe on this guy over here, we got one more of our little pine tree guys, just like that. Whoop. Now pop him in, filling up some space, just mushing him against the canvas, popping back and forth, back and forth, and then we're going to come in and add our little highlights, right? And that's what we're really worried about. Not the dark, deep, dark, shadowy bit. We don't care what that part looks like. It's all about what our highlights look like. So let's take the rest of this dark paint and say we came up here with a little bit higher, more jaggedy bit of a rock way out there at the base of our clouds. So we go from that very kind of bright, gets darker and darker and darker, and then all of a sudden it's that deep darkness. Well, that's gonna be the first part of our bright bit of uh, rocks, right? So, all depends, gotta let it blend down, right? Take it wherever you want, mixing up the paint, smushing it on, having this big section over here, and then add some color and see what it looks like. See where you're gonna go from there. All right, so let's grab up some more yellow ochre, some more of our brown. Get over here, you little guy. It's got all that skin in it again. There we go. Aha! Now, a little bit of our brown, mixing it up into there, creating that same sort of color, but it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to match 100%. You're never going to get it 100% the same. Just sort of make it about the same. Just who cares? Like, who's taking it so seriously, right? Come on. Little scrapes. And then we come over here. Maybe we're going to change the angle of our swipes now. We're going to go more of a straight, like, whew, down like this. Get a little J. Shoing! Bringing them down like that, right? That cool little bit, and we hit up onto this side, starts going back that way. Bunk, and then maybe we slide down again at a little different angle. Who knows? What's It's all whatever yours looks like, right? I'm just kind of showing you some cool little things. Maybe we'll come down like this, just letting it very lightly grip onto whatever's there. Whatever that dark color is out there, it's going to grip onto it. We'll start going in different directions, little light areas, little dark areas. like we can walk up the side of this thing and get to the top. That's going to be cool. Now, let's go back and give ourselves just some nice little, just a few little highlights on our trees, right? A couple little bits. So why don't we go into our blue? She loved blue and pink. So let's go in. We're going to put a little bit of our blue off the back side of this tree, All right? Not trying to cover up the whole bit, but just having a little bit of extra blue back there. And then this guy, I'll go off the right side of these guys. Because our moon is sitting in such a, a place that all of our shadows would be in different spots on these trees, in my eyes anyway. Now we'll go back in with the littlest bit of white onto our brush. And maybe just a touch of that crimson color to make it pinky. And we'll have our pink and blue trees, just like the client wanted, right? Now, come in here. Let's go into our little bit of crimson, sneak a little bit, pull it down there, mix it up, bring it down. We'll probably need some more liquid white. So, you guys are going to tell me where you're watching from and what's your favorite sandwich while I get a little bit more of our Bob Ross liquid white out of the jar and into the little Petri dish. The little Petri dish, I call it, because there must be something growing in there by now, I would imagine. I would imagine. So we're going to mix it up, plop it out. I know you guys love seeing all this behind-the-scenes nonsense. I should be ready, and I'm sorry that I'm not ready. Didn't realize the amount of liquid white that we had in the Petri dish, which looks just like that, right? Looks like something's growing in there. I can imagine something growing in that Petri dish right there. Now, let's come back with a little bit of that liquid white and that our bit of our titanium white and crimson mix, right? I'm just going to brighten it up a bit. Ooh, there we go. That's going to be pretty. Now, it makes it very bright colored, so you get, and very light, right? So it'll pop off of your, your brush easily and onto your tree. So we just start trembling. We make these little bits, start lighting up little things, little places where our tree trunks are gonna come out, our little branches are gonna be lit up. And it doesn't have to be perfect, it doesn't have to be the most, you know, straight line thing either, right? You can change it up, come out a little bit more into your darker shadowy bits, but we're not gonna light up the entire tree. 
right? Just like that. Get a couple little things out there. Then we'll go back and we'll make them a little bit darker on our blue side. A little bit darker on the blue side. A couple little trembles. And as we slap the canvas, you got to move. Bob and move, right? It's Muhammad Atri instead of Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Atri. Bob and move on those suckers. Now, let's go back in with a little bit of our blue on with the liquid white in the blue up here. Brighten it up just a bit. There we go. Got to get a little bit more even. The blue is such a powerful color that it like literally just overtakes everything. Come in there. Now we're going to pop in our little bluey, shadowy bits. I'm going to make them not 100% perfect, right? It doesn't have to be a perfectly straight line, but now you got a few little places where it's high lit and where it's not. Get all those colors. And we didn't, we didn't get rid of all the deep, dark color either, right? That's what you got to keep. And remember, we don't like painting realism around here. I find it very boring. So, use lots of sharp colors, lots of bright stuff, and deep, dark shadows, right? It looks very cool when you get them on there. I just love to pop on these dark black canvases. Very neat. Okay, now let's come back the last little bit of our liquid white into some of that little bit of pinky color. And we'll come over here and pop our little guys onto this side. Just popping up little trembly bits. Right? Little things, turn the brush. Angles are most important when you're trying to do these little branches. Just like that. Cool little thing. And then we'll go off the back side with our liquid white and the blue. Make them look a little bit the same as the other guys over there. Get these dark canvases and the dark colors get eaten up very fast. Very fast they get eaten up. There we go. Popping them out, changing the angle, right? Adjusting so you get these blue and white trees all over the place, baby. That is going to be awesome. Awesome, awesome. So, let's see. It's been a while since I've come back and said hello to you guys. Let's see if the buyer's even here. Is she here? Patricia, are you here? Hmm. Remember, guys, we're also simultaneously filming this for YouTube, and you'll be able to go over and re-watch it over on YouTube for a million times over, right? Going to add a little bit more of that deeper, darker color in where some of our brighter blue bits got a little bit too bright. You keep that deep, dark, shadowy area. Got to have the place where the critters can live. If there's no place for the critters to live, then your tree's too bright, right? Very cool. doesn't have to be a perfect thing. That's what I always say anyway. It doesn't have to be the most perfect. I never want it to be a perfect straight line or a perfectly high lit whatever. I gotta have it be weird. That's what nature is. Nature is a bunch of random weirdness out there and that's what makes it look cool to me. So let's wash off these brushes, beat the devil out of these old brushes, get them nice and clean. Then we're gonna come in with some more waterfalls, guys. So if you're ready for some waterfall action right down here in the foreground, and don't worry, I'm gonna drop the YouTube camera a little bit lower so you can see the whole, can uh, the whole canvas. Then we're gonna fill up our rocks over here, put some branches on our little trees. It'll be wicked cool, wicked cool. Just gotta finish washing off some of these brushes. So tell me where you're watching from, guys, and if you want to get your own custom painting, or I've got tons of shirts, I've got posters, I've got canvas prints, I've got all sorts of stuff, go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com. And then once you're in my, my uh, store, you can search for the word TikTok. It'll pull up every TikTok painting we've ever painted that's still available for sale. Or you can, search, you can search for poster or canvas print or whatever. Keywords, clothing, right? Whatever you're going to search for. Search for it over there, or just start scrolling. Just browse the store. Get lost in all of the stuff that I have over there in the Etsy store. It's fantastic, and every purchase that you guys make just helps me buy more supplies and uh, pay the Wi-Fi bill and pay for the lights and pay for the, the gas and everything, you know, everything, literally everything. I do this as a full-time job. So every bit of your guys' help is helpful. Trust me, and I love you for it. I really do. Now, let's come back in. We'll add a bit of our little tree branches. Now these little guys, you don't have to be too worried about because they're not a lot, they're not a real focal point, if you know what I mean. You know what I mean? <laughs> Let's get a little bit of our odorless mineral spirits onto our brush and then like five, six, seven times dipping it into the cup and then out back here into a little pile of paint so they become very wet. It's very wet and runny. That way it'll come off of our brush nice and easily as it drags
rides out that way. You get all these cool little things that happen, right? All based on the right amount of pressure, a couple little flicks here and there, and if you've got enough paint on your brush, you know what I mean, then it'll all come off nicely. Uh, and enough um, odorless mineral spirits as well. If you don't have enough mineral spirits, it's not gonna come off your brush very easily, which means you're gonna have to push harder to create more color, and that's gonna make your branches a bit thicker, and they're not gonna be as sharp, and they're not gonna be as neat, right? So gotta have the right stuff. Make sure you got the right amount of your odorless mineral spirits in there. Come out into that bit of cloud, just being all crazy like a branch would be, right? And then anywhere we got a little poker, we could just go whoop and flip a bit out there, throw one off to the side, and it'd be longer if you wanted to be. Just extend it, right? However you want your little branches to look, that's how you make them look. Reaching out like it's down, reaching down towards the water or wherever it's trying to go. A couple little things over there. Another little big old chunk of a branch, right? Growing out that way. All depends on what you want your trees to look like. I always say it. Let's pop that out this side. A little bit, boom. Fantastic, they don't all have to be the same. But remember, if you start having to work harder, go back and get some more mineral spirits on your brush, and then into your little pile of dark paint. And then, ooh, cheese is really runny. There we go. Once it's very wet and very runny, then it's gonna come off of our brush so much easier. Get these really sharp little bits, right? All throughout that light color. But let's say you were just trying to do this without our odorless mineral spirits, your brush is gonna mix in with that white, right? All this little dark color that we have on our brush is instantly gonna mix in with our white paint of our clouds and it's gonna go very light colored. It's not gonna stay dark. And you need it to stay dark in order to project itself as in front of those clouds, right? So you gotta use enough of our mineral spirits to keep the brush and the paint nice and dark, just like that. Very cool. Very cool, guys. Now, let's go back to our bit of brown, onto our palette knife. Say we came up here, we start dropping on little things, little bits of stuff everywhere. There we go. It doesn't need to be as bright as it can possibly be all the way back towards the edge of the canvas either. So as we're dropping them down, changing up our angle, we're going like that, right? Maybe we have one come in like this. A whole other different way. Ripping it down that way because the rocks are just a they're they're a, a big bunch of pile. Right? It's not a it's not just one big thing. There are piles and piles of rocks that are molded together and squished over time. So they don't have to be this one straight, gorgeous looking thing. Maybe there's a little flat spot over here where the little birdies can hang out. Who knows? Just by pulling it back, dragging back the littlest amount of color, because you want it to be very dark back there. You don't know what's happening way off in the distance. We can't see all the way over there. It's nighttime. We can barely see what's going on in front of our faces, right? We're out there like this. I can't see anything. It's so dark out. Right, we got that big old giant moon out in the sky. Like, come on. Come on, guys. Let's do it. It's going to be awesome. It looks like there's a bristle. Is that a bristle? It was a bristle. I was like, oh, man, I came out of the painting. I came out of my lines, but it was a brush hair was sitting out there. Okay, now we got our bit of water. We got our bits over here. Let's mix up a bit more of our dark color with our blues and black and crimson and mix that up down overneath here. Yes, I just said overneath. Overneath here. Doesn't make any sense, but that's what we're gonna say. Now let's take it down like this. We're gonna bring some of that darkness out. Just a touch, right? We don't need a whole lot, but you gotta have that dark, thick, nasty paint on the canvas to grip on to our bit of highlights. And that's why they grip on at all these little random areas because you have random levels of paint as we just mushed it out there, right? It's all at different little micro levels. And then once you go across it with this paint, it's gonna pick all those little bits up on the raised areas, right? And so you get these little details that start happening in there that would just take you 10 million years to paint if you tried to do it a different way. And don't tell me it wouldn't. It literally would and you literally get it done so fast, whip it out, Knock them out, get all those little things, and as long as you don't touch all of the colors together, right, leaving those little dark areas and those little spots among the whole thing, then you know you're going to be good. You know you're going to be good. All right, now let's come back in. Let's get a little bit of our white back in here because underneath that dark separator is where we want to pop in just a little bit, right? But we still have that darkness back there. And you get your little bit of water as it's coming out. We're scraping it out, getting these cool little bits to start coming, and they don't all have to connect. They don't all have to be the same, right? All these neat little things, you guys. Tell me that's not the coolest thing ever. Just tell me it ain't, because it is. 
It literally is. You can't. You can't tell me it ain't, because it is. <laughs> so we're going to come back in. And again, just mush it. Take a little bit on there, a little scrapey. Come out here, just scraping it on different areas, almost straight sideways. You know what I mean? Just pushing, having it drag as much of it as it possibly can off of the knife. And just like that, you got a cool little bit of, sh of uh, ripply bits. And then I like to go very lightly just over them, just like that. Softest little bit, smallest little thing. Right? And then you get those cool little things that are kind of softer. They're not as crazy. And then perhaps with this guy, since it's such a big canvas, we can get a little of our liquid white out on the edge and then literally throw in a couple little spray bits like they're coming out of that waterfall. It came down and just hit so hard that you get all those little sprays and then take these guys that are down underneath and wipe them into the water. They'll literally blend straight away. That's the best part about that liquid white is the less you want it, the more you got to blend it away. That's literally it. Take a bit more of our white, our thick titanium white this time. Come in like that. And then very lightly, even more light than before, creating our shadowy or our misty bit in the front up here. Again, not trying not to cover our dark separator, just having to be a little brighter, right? That means that that lighter color, right? That darkness in the back almost gives you like a 3D bit of mist because you have a bit darker colored mist in the back, a lighter colored mist in the front. And then we're gonna go back in and pop in the last of those little guys right in the front of that thing. Looks really cool. Just, you can't tell me it don't. Dang, go back over them very lightly. Boom, boom, boom. And of course, while we're doing this, we gotta pop in a, just a billion stars, just about as quickly as, as creation made them with the big bang, just boom, and all the stars out into the sky. <laughs> just within about 10 seconds, you painted 90 million stars all throughout your sky, and it turned out fantastic. Taking anything that hit our moon, Remember, that liquid white will just blend away. That's the best part about it. Just blend that sucker right away. Gorgeous, you guys. Let's put one more big tree over here. I love me some big trees, especially when we got all this dark still. So let's grab up some of this onto the brush. One more of these guys. They'll come in like that. Very light, very light, very light. More, more, more pressure, 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 pressure. Boom, right down onto that rock. Just amazing. Just amazing. We're going to come in here like this. A little bit more. Boop, pop them down, and then watch this. I'm going to stick them behind the rocks just by putting a bit of that brown in front. I just popped them right behind on the other side of the rock. Nobody even knows what's going on back there. We can't even see it. Can't even see, but you know what? Just as it goes from that brightness down to the dark and then to that super dark, that makes me want to look. I want to be like, what's, what's over that little, that little rocky hill back there? Let's go explore. Who's coming to check it out with me and go see what's behind that little hill? Anybody? Anybody coming with? No? That's okay. That's okay. I'd be afraid to. I'd be scared too, it's all right. Now we're gonna come over here, we're gonna wash out this old dark brush. Shake it off, beat the devil out of it, and then go back, add our little branches, and then we're gonna throw in some waterfalls at the bottom and we'll be just about done, guys. Just about, look at this one right here. We're gonna start popping in these branches. A lot of pressure on your brush when you're down here. And then you go to lighter and lighter and lighter pressure, right? When you're up here, very light pressure to lighter and lighter and lighter pressure. All depends on what you want your branches to look like, which way you want them to go. Maybe this guy comes out and goes down, right? Make it look like it's coming out towards us. Very cool. You don't all have to go up. They don't always have to be the same direction or the same thing. And really, when you think about it, no one's going to be looking at these tree branches back here unless they're like really into trees. Then they're going to be looking at these tree branches. But most people are going to be looking at your waterfalls down here, right? So all we're doing is adding a little bit of detail. Just out on those tree branches out there is all you need. A couple little bits against that lighter color. Remember, you got to have your light color of your clouds back there. Otherwise, the darkness of the branch doesn't stand out and make it seem in front. It'll be lost without that light color. That's why we did so many clouds to put all that brightness back behind where we think that we want to keep dark, right? Now, you can even do on some of these bigger trees, maybe they're a little closer. I'll take that same bit and let's go on the left side. We're just going to touch it with that bit of brown and start moving up the tree. Just little thing, little teeniest amount, like a little line on the thing. And then we're going to come over here. Just touch the one side of the trunk. Doesn't have to go all the way to the top. And again, no one's even going to see. Now, this time we're going on the right side of the trunk because this is on the, the right side of the moon. The light's going to hit on the left side. These are on the left side of the moon. The light's going to hit on the right side. So we come back in very lightly. Remember, don't make your browns touch down here. You want to keep that difference, keep that separation. 
And not the entire tree can be brown. You have to have some of it be dark back there. It can't all be the same amount of brown or the same color or whatever. Can't let it happen, right? Gotta leave little bits of light, little bits of dark everywhere. Now, way out here, way up at the top, doesn't need to be the brownest or the brightest thing you've ever seen. But just that little bit, that little yellowish brownish color on these trees against all that darkness and light back there just helps them stand out, guys. It's just amazing. Just literally amazing. Let me take this guy over here. And that's another way if, you're, if your clouds are a bit too dark and you, your trees just can't stay, they won't stand out in front. Well, put a little bit of this brown on them. Guarantee you they stand out. A little bit. Don't even have to go all the way to the top. You just want to have some bit of brown somewhere out on our tree. Somewhere out there. Make your branches brown. No? Nobody? Okay. <laughs> well, stop singing. Just stop singing, Josh, please. Don't ever open your mouth again like that. No one wants to hear that. Thank you. Okay, I got it. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. Now, let's get to our waterfall. Let's get down to some falling water. I can hear it. It's making me have to use the bathroom. I can hear it so bad. Now, this is where we're going to have to get down on my, on my hands and knees and, uh, and maybe propose to this canvas. You never know. So, let's see, guys. Drunken Tiger Lily and Bird Woman are here. I'm going to have to come down on the YouTube camera to see the bottom. So, everybody just chill for a minute. Right? There we go. We're sliding down. We're sliding down. And poof. I think that'll be good enough. Gorgeous. Slay. Slay, they say. Someone found, let's see, D. Denton, my favorite so far. Appreciate that. I appreciate that so much. Wow, looks great. I wish, uh, oh, I've almost forgotten her name now. Priscilla, no, it's not Priscilla. I wish the buyer would be here, though. I really wish. They're going to miss out on naming their painting. I'm going to have to save it and have them name it afterwards. I did send them, I sent the buyer like four messages today. I was like, hey, I'm going to paint the painting today. And then I sent him a picture of it on the on the thing it was all uh, i actually i messed up and i made it white in the sky instead of all black like she wanted and i was back scrolling through the message going, oh she, she wanted it black so i sent her a picture again i'm like hey i'm gonna paint the painting at like six o'clock six o'clock came around i still didn't hear from her i was like okay i'm gonna give it one more hour and i messaged her again i was like okay i'm gonna paint your painting i hope to see you in the comments i hope you're there so if not we're gonna have to name it without you right okay let's come down here on our hands and knees and then what they're going to do is just start making little bits, right? Just like we did before with our palette knife. This time with the brush. Back and forth and back and forth. And all we're doing is kind of gripping onto things, leading up to different places where maybe you can have a little waterfall fall out right up here. You can have one fall out over the edge. You can do a lot. This whole thing could be like a very flat plate where the water's coming down and it just spreads out and goes all the way out to the side and then falls over. You never know, right? What does yours look like? Because that's what we always ask. What does yours look like? Yours is the one that we're worried about here, not mine. Yours, right? Bam, 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 bam. Just adding a little bit more paint by making it brighter, pushing a little bit harder, right? Having it blend in more with this guy. And then we decide where we want it to come out, how far you want it to go over, you know, what you want it to look like. All depends on us, right? So I thought maybe... We could even do three waterfalls and put one off that side, right? You never know. Totally up to you. Whatever you want to do, all up to you guys. But I think that's the way that I want to rock and roll with mine. And then we'll keep it very dark down here. And that'll be like the shadowy bits and a flat play. Oh, God, I love it. Just love it already. So let's wash that brush off. I'm going to get some more white paint on it. Remember, any time that we go up with our white paint, it's starting to interact with all of the undercolors that we put down initially, the crimson and the blue that we put down under the canvas, right? I need that, says Veronica. That's funny. Let's see, I think the lady's name was Priscilla. I thought, no, maybe I'm, Patricia? No, maybe it's Patricia. Priscilla, Patricia, I forget, but it's a custom painting that was, it was already been purchased. So uh, she told me she wanted pink, or she had her, her, her motif was blue with pink. And I was like, okay, I got you. I love those two colors. Mm. Then she said, she's a nurse, right? And nurses have a love-hate relationship with a full moon. So she says she wanted, probably because the crazies are out, and everybody gets hurt when there's a full moon, so the nurse load becomes more, right? But, uh, so she says she wanted a full moon, 
pinks and blues with trees and flowers, which we're going to put down here, and all sorts of stuff. Now, we figured out what we're going to do with our water. And come back over, we're going to swipe it over the side, softening it down, right? Leaving it intentionally uncovered and dark back here. And back here. Right? You don't have to fill up every space. You're not going to see every single thing. Don't worry about it. Now we're going to come back in, get a little bit more of our dark mix, our crimson, black, and blue paint into that big old pile because still we got to come down over here and we pop out over our water. That's why we're leaving it dark back there. So we're going to come out and we have this jagged bit of rock just pop up right out of the thing and really take your eye right there. Right? And pull some of that black down, that crimsony, purpley paint, all that stuff, that mixture. going to pull it down. Now, let's decide what our waterfalls are going to look like. So we're going to come off the edge and this painting uh, when I very first did the, the four waterfalls, it represented one and then a big M at the bottom for one million followers. When we finally got to a million followers and surpassed that on all three platforms together, not just on one platform singularly, but uh, excuse me, four, on all four platforms. So we've jumped up from, from like, what, 10,000 YouTube subs to 40,000. We've got 333,000 TikTok followers, 380. 3,000 Facebook followers and 292,000 Instagram followers. That's a lot. Okay, let's come over here. Over to the side. Down. Side and down. And down. And we get to decide what it looks like, how far it goes out, how light it is, all the stuff that's happening right out there. We get to decide, right? So we came down over here again and down. Out, down, out, down. Wherever you have that pinky mixture is where it's going to go pink. Imagine that. Right? So if you didn't put any crimson or anything down along the, under your canvas before you started, you're going to be quickly realizing that your colors aren't changing. You just have white paint on a black canvas, right? Because you didn't put that under color down. You weren't paying attention in the beginning of the class because you just very lightly dropped those little bits of white over the top. They're like little diamonds just shining. And they don't all have to be the same, remember. Don't all have to be the same. So in the beginning of the painting, if you're just tuning in right now, and you're like, how the heck is he just using white? And all of these colors are just emerging from betwixt his bristles of his brush, right? It's because we put our dark colors down first. You gotta put those undercolors in if you want any bit of your white to shine through, right? Take this bit, pull it off to the side, just like that. So it's a little bit higher over there, a little bit lower over here. Right? That little lip. This guy, we're gonna go the same, pull him off to the side. They don't have to touch, they can, they don't have to. This whole thing's gonna be covered by a big rock anyway. So, just like that, pulling it off a little bit over there. Gonna have another big rock here, so pull it off to the side, just like so. Just try not to make all of our colors be exactly the same. That's not what you want. And just like that, guys, we got a really wicked little waterfall set up for some jaggedy rocks. Now, should we put a pool of water down in the bottom? Should we put a pool of water in the base? Or should we make it all mysterious and just have like this mist just floating up because the water's fallen so far down that it's hit and then all this mist has just started to float up and around the edges. What do you guys think? What do you think? What do you think? Pool of water. Somebody says a pool. We got mist and mist and most and mist and pool and pole and pool and mist. Love the mist. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah over there on YouTube. We got mist, mist, mist. Mist, mist. There's lots more mist than pools, guys. No pool, mist. All right, let's mist it up. Let's mist it up. Because you know what we did? On this guy, on this version, right? A little bit smaller, a little bit brighter, daytime version. We added a pool at the bottom of this guy, right? This one is available for sale. If you want this sunset one, go search for number 841 in my store. You can buy this one. It's called Road to Dracula's Lair. And it just looks like, I don't know, you could just climb up this whole thing. Dracula lives somewhere out there. It's very spooky. So if you want this one, again, this is the, when we finally passed 1 million followers, this was the painting that got painted. The 1 million follower painting is right here. So if you want a piece of history, go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com and buy this monster and I'll send it right out to you, okay? All right, now let's come in since we've got our bit. Everybody has decided that we want mist. Mist at the bottom, right? So what we're going to do is get on our hands and knees and say, will you marry me? Painting, you're so gorgeous. I'll love you for the rest of my days. Right? Take our, our big old two-inch brush over and down. Same. Just very lightly. So light. 
Oh, so light. All it does is just soften it the teeniest, tiniest bit. All right, now we're going to take a bit of our white onto the brush. Just a gorgeous bit of white. And yeah, we're going to put our mist in first. So, we're going to come in here and start misting it up. A little bit of cloud action. Just, ah, wherever you want to go. Get it into the clouds. Get to the chopper. Get it in there. Just all up in there, right? All we got to do. Now, based off of how much we push, it's going to determine what it looks like with all of our mist. And we don't want to cover up all the black, right? So we want to leave some of our dark area and everything else to just very lightly light up. Like a little bit of mistiness. A little bit of fogginess coming from somewhere deep down below, but we don't want the very bottom to be so bright that you can see everything, right? You want it to be dark down here, so don't get all of our bright color way down there. That's not what you want. A little bit of our mist up into here. If you go into your waterfall, watch this. Straight down and over again. Perfectly fine. All right, coming into here. All over the place. And, bop, 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 bop. and then we can decide what we want our rocks to look like and everything else just based on our pressure, right? All that mist falling down into the depths. Davy Jones's locker. Way down here, guys. Oh, so pretty. You know what's funny, too, about this whole thing? Say the buyer came onto the, the live right now and they're like, oh my god, I really wanted a pool at the bottom. <laughs> Throw a bit of uh, more paint over the top, you got yourself a pool at the bottom. Very simply and easily, just like that, as we come into here. Very cool. Now we're going to wash that brush off. All that dark color out of that paint and that brush. Now we're going to go add our rocks. And the rocks are going to be fun, you guys. They're going to be fun. Man, oh man, they're going to be fun. So, into here, we're going to get our dark color again. The same dark color. We're using limited colors for this painting. All that dark mix, probably don't need that much, Josh, Jesus. Just like that, big old nasty amount. And we're going to come up, covering up into, watch these jagged little spikes as we come up into our bit of white. Really mushing it on there. Covering every bit we can think of. Right, just anywhere where you're going to see where that water's coming from. And we're going to come down here. A little bit of our darker paint, dropping it down over those misty bits. Remember, you can have all these cool little bits of action come down like that. This guy, we're going to rotate the brush out that way. Just come up. Oh, just right there. Just poking just into the thing. Just a teensy, teensy little bit. Right? A little spiker right there. I love these little rocks, guys. They just look, they're so spiky and jaggedy. These little Mick Jaggerty rocks over here. Bang. Wicked sauce. For whatever reason, it ends up looking like a, like a transformer to me. I never know why. So we're going to bring it down. Drop it in some of our little bits darkness down into a bit of that mist, but not covering everything, right? We don't have to cover every single bit. Just want to have a bit of our dark falling down, turn the knife on the side, give these little vertical swipes down there. We're going to mix it all up anyway. It's totally fine, right? Now, let's take a bit of our brown while we're down here, might as well, and not try to cover every bit of dark, right? Just about half and half is all we got to do. Get a little brown, starts coming up, dropping off, and then you're like, okay, if it starts turning too brown too quickly, you go, okay, I gotta move. I need to get to another spot. All right, get out of there. Drop to another spot, turn a different angle. All right, go over that side. Or come over here and grab the littlest bit. And if you're like, oh, geez, that was a bunch, well, move. Move around or scrape it up and come back, right? Come off the back side of our knife over here, just very lightly. Dropping it down. Doesn't have to be the brightest thing, right? Just those little differences is all you're gonna have back in there. Very cool little things we can do, guys while my arm rests in a pile of paint over here on my table like an idiot. There we go. Come out into this side, just dropping a little more of that dark so we can come back and light it up. Right. Pulling it down, pulling it down to Chinatown. There we go. Down, down, down. Got these wicked little things. Now what we're going to do is come in with our brown and start to attach onto this guy and pull it from a different direction and pull down this way, right? All depends on what it looks like, where you want to go with it, how bright, watch, so scrape it up and then do it over again. And it automatically dulls itself down just by doing that one thing to where it doesn't look so stinking bright anymore, right? Just like that, come back in. Oh, I went to go make another one, we don't have any more. I guess we got some over here. Come out onto this guy, very lightly, change directions, swiping it down. So cool. Leave that bit of mist back there, I like that. That's neat. Now we gotta put one more 
bit of our, our big old chunky rock in. But my knees are starting to hurt, so I've got to stand up for a minute. And we're going to mix up all this dark powder. How old does that make me sound? My knees are hurting, guys. I need my cane and my knees and my crooked back because I'm so old. It makes me sound older than I am. But you sit up here and try to sit on your knees the whole time. We're going to come up here like this with our dark paint. And let's go back and put this last giant old just crazy nasty bit of dark rock out there. Just out to live forever. He's like, I will live forever in this thing. No amount of water can ever erode me. Eroding. Eroding. No, it's never, never. This will never be eroded, this rock. He refuses to erode away because he's out there so strong. Very cool, guys. Very cool. Now, let's come back in. You can tell Josh starts going crazy after a little while. When the paintings run too long, then Josh starts really getting nuts. I'm gonna drop off our bit of brown. Little as places, not trying to make everything brown, just trying to have little minute differences and dark areas and different things growing on our little bit of rocks back there. Man, that looks fantastic. Oh, guys, tell me she won't be happy with that. Right, blue. With pink highlights? Come on! That's a pretty painting right there, guys. My goodness, my goodness. What's going on over here? Let's see. Not that old, that's for sure, says Deborah. Very true. Let's see. Here we go. Someone not found. Got to do the birds for sure. Oh, definitely got to do the birds. So, man, I hope the buyer likes it. I really wish that she would have been here. I mean, I did give her ample time, like six, seven hours over the day to check her Etsy messages and be like, okay, Josh is going to paint my painting today. I, I really want her to be here so she could name it. So I hope that she's here. Maybe I just haven't seen her in the comments. Um, I'm almost certain her name's Patricia. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I get that. I've had a lot of orders and a lot of things. It's hard to keep everything straight. Pretty sure it's Patricia. So if Patricia's here, we would love to name your painting or help you name it anyway. Start typing the name in the comments, guys, what you would want to name this. And maybe if one just comes out so fantastically perfect, we'll just have to choose that name. And that's just what it's going to be, right? If she wasn't here, then, you know, I don't know. Or maybe we don't name it and we save it for her to name later on. Who knows? Who knows? Whatever, you know, I never, whatever I do will be the wrong thing. So it doesn't matter. Either which way, what happens? Because it'll be the wrong thing. No matter what, if I'm doing it, it's going to be wrong. Let's go in here and get our little liquid white so lightly. We're going to come down onto this side where it's very dark. And we're going to sign the old painting down here. Just like this. Guys, all right. A little bit more of our white. And then we'll add the birds and then we'll be done. So start coming up with a name for this painting. What do you want to call it? And maybe the buyer will just pop in just right now and be like, oh my god, my painting is finished. I want to name it this. And that'd be fantastic. Now, we need to add, let's make our little bird family white. Let's make them white birds in this one. Because we got all this room up here, like they're flying through the sky. Gorgeous. Oh, got to make Bailey a little bit brighter. She always gets mad if she comes and looks at the painting and she sees that herself is not like a very bright bird because by the third time, there's no more paint left on the brush, you know what I mean? And so she'll go, uh, Dad, people can't see me very well. You need to make me brighter. I'm like, you're right, sweetheart. You're right. Let me, let me fix it. So now I try to get to it before she can call me out on it, right? There we go, guys. It turned out fantastic. <laughs> so, uh, let's say bye to the YouTube crew. Now that the video is finished, um, come hang out with us over on TikTok if you want to see what goes on after the show is over while we sit and mess around for a bit. Uh, but until I see you guys again next time, I hope you really try this tutorial. I hope you love it. And uh, I hope you send it in to facebook.com slash paintwithjosh. And until I see you guys again, take care. Have the rest of a good day. Bye-bye. Oh, oh, oh. Woo, what a painting, you guys. What a 